So, I was watching a video from my friend Adam Friended the other day. Adam Friended? Meh. We hate Adam Friended almost as much as Stephanie. Well, yeah, okay, so you hate Adam Friended now, but two years from now, you are all going to be, or most of you are going to be Adam Friended. Why is that, Rabbi? Because Adam Friended has discovered, based on the evidence, the sociological utility of religion. More specifically, the pro-social benefits of religion. Now, this is not a faith-based conclusion. This is an evidence-based conclusion. Data-driven analysis, kids, the things that you say that you are always wanting. So you can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. And I listen to you atheists, you know, morning, noon, and night, you say to me, there's got to be evidence, there's got to be evidence, provide the evidence, provide the evidence. You say you base your conclusions of reality on, on objective facts that are scientifically verifiable. And if somebody proves to you the scientifically verifiable facts, you will modify your view of reality to in light of that new information and change your views. And I kind of believe you. You can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. You can't say on the one hand, I base my views of reality on scientifically verifiable evidence, and then on the other hand, ignore said evidence when it contradicts your hidden precept that religion somehow mysteriously sucks. The, the idea that religion sucks is more of an irrational impulse in you. There's something about religion that you don't like. I'll give you that. But the scientifically verifiable conclusion that there are pro-social benefits to religion is becoming ever more inescapable. The fact that you don't know this is because you haven't been really keeping up with the available research. So, yes, Adam Friended, two years from now, most of you are going to be on the same page as him. So you hate him now, get used to him. There are pro-social benefits to religion, kids. This is, this is no-brainer. This is case closed. This is backed up by... Data-driven analysis, objectively, scientifically verifiable information, study of religion in, so, in society at large. Now, one of the potential benefits of religion that gets not very often discussed that I'll bring up now is the invisible cop on the beat. Religion provides, shall we say, an incentive to not do evil acts because I, your humble religitard, carry within me an invisible cop that watches my actions and watches over me. Yeah, sometimes he watches over me as a loving guide, savior, friend, but he also watches over me as a, as a stern father figure. Invisible cop on the beat, waiting to thwack me if I do things that are not right. So, let's fast forward to the mystical Norway of tomorrow. And the mystical Norway of tomorrow is my shorthand for the beautiful world that the anti-theist imagines once we, have, once we have dismantled religion off the face of the earth. Imagine this utopian secular paradise. Now, here's one of the potential things that needs to be answered in this, in this utopian secular paradise. Why do good? More specifically, why not commit an evil act in this mystical Norway of tomorrow? Now, before you answer and you say, well, because there are consequences for actions, you're gonna want, nobody wants to go to jail, you're gonna, you're gonna go to jail. Okay, consequentialism, potentially a decent answer. Herein lies the problem with consequentialism as an answer. Philosophically speaking, it is possible to outmaneuver the social contract. In other words, it is possible to do an act without suffering any consequences in the society at large. It happens all the time happens constantly. So better question philosophically speaking, if you want to give philosophical underpinnings to your mystical Norway of tomorrow, why, why do good when nobody is around and nobody is watching and you're going to get away with it? There's a small child sitting on a sofa. Why not harm them? Why not harm them? And outside of the fact that you don't want to, fine. But let's say you did want to, why not? Because one of the things you're going to have to contend with in the mystical Norway of tomorrow is that is human nature itself. This is a, another argument that I'll put on another video at another time. But rationally speaking, human beings are not necessarily inclined to do good without outside influence. If you're looking at religion as, a, as an evolutionary concept, construct, 
and not an actual, there's an actual God behind religion, well, that would perfectly explain how religion evolved. Yeah, as a means of social control, but as a means of social control that you actually want in the society that you live in. <laughs> because without the means of social control, it's every man for himself. And you got to be on the receiving end of that bad behavior fr from time to time, if not very frequently. So, in your mystical Norway of tomorrow, let us ask again, what, what is stopping someone from doing an evil act if there's no one's going to catch them? behind closed doors where nobody's going to see. Well, in Christianity, it's answered very easily because one day I'm going to stand before the Lord and he's going to take into account every single deed I did in this body, including every word out of my mouth. And I'm going to have to answer to him. I'm going to be held accountable for everything that I did. Now, irrespective of whether that's true or not, and just as an aside, the Bible, the Bible tends to indicate, the Bible plainly indicates that all of us sort of know that's true whether we accept it or not. But that's, again, a, a question for another video. Irrespective of whether that's true or not, you can easily see how that is a powerful check on my behavior, that there are limits to how much evil I am willing to do because I don't want to, you know, the Bible says, do not put the Lord your God to a foolish test. And every single Christian knows that scripture or some variation of that scripture. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And those scriptures put a check on our behavior. There's a limit to how much evil we will do with the lights are out behind closed doors in the privacy of our own home. Why? Because we think somebody is watching. And as the science indicates, if you think somebody is watching and you hold that eternal, internal guideline, that internal check on your behavior, that's a powerful incentive, a powerful insert, internal incentive to do right, to not steal, to not commit a crime, to not harm a small child because you think somebody's watching and you think you're gonna have to answer for it someday. See, it's not some mysterious coincidence. Go back to 1955, United States of America. You could leave your doors unlocked at night. Coincidence of coincidence, at the exact same time in our culture, roughly 90% of the population practice a form of Christianity and they believe that form of Christianity. So every single person in the culture, almost to a man, was carrying around some version of the invisible cop, and hence you could leave your doors open at night. There is a strong correlation between those two facts. Anecdotal evidence, sure, but pretty obviously so. You know, you further, further examine the state of our society today, and you see that by the time we get to the 60, 1965, and religion started to the religious influence started to deteriorate on the culture at large. We also have tons of, you know, social, social ills that rose up in its place. Just something to think about. One of the pro-social benefits of religion that, you know, gets a bad rep by the anti-theists. Religion gives its practitioners, I, your humble religitard, carry around within me an invisible cop. And that invisible cop is active morning, noon, and night, no matter what time of day or night. It is, he, is, he is a check on my behavior, stopping me from doing things that I might be otherwise inclined to do. Now, you say sometimes, well, I have so much empathy, so I'm not going to do those terrible things. Well, yeah, you, you, you're a great person. <laughs> you probably won't. But most of the rest of us will. That's reality. And if you look at the society that we live in, it's pretty much case closed. Once the, once the mainstream religion started to lose its grip on the public imagination, you know, people started to take more license with their behavior. Some of that is potentially positive or at least not negative, but some of it is extraordinarily negative. This is a no-brainer conclusion as far as I'm concerned. So, I don't know, just food for thought, kids. I just watched the Adam video and this is my response to it, so take it for what it's worth. Amen.